yeah, we think about all of these variables and so does obviously metabolic, poor metabolic health. I mean, that's like the number one. It's exactly. so weird. We live in this country full of like very, very terrible metabolic health. And then people are pumping testosterone into them and not doing any of the other things to support their metabolic health. And then it starts to aromatase into estrogen and they wonder why these studies come out showing, you know, adverse effects. It's like putting a product into a dumpster fire. Yep. It doesn't go well. <laughs> the pathways aren't working, you know, so we got to do all the things people and then we can use these biohacks or whatever you want these tools these, ad, you know, these advantageous tools to get us closer to our goals. I do think though, as far as like an all terrain product or treatment, I honestly like methylene blue is all terrain for real on for, I mean, this is like something I travel with little trochies, methylene blue trochies, yep. cause they just get you out of so many pinches. Like it really is such a, like you said to the antiviral effect, et cetera. And then this, I travel with my little red light. Like the two of those are all terrain vehicles for a myriad of concerns and potential benefits. So I'm a big fan. What else? What have we not mentioned? Well, just to kind of piggyback on your thought process there, like the only two tools that we have, at least that we know of right now, that can dissociate that nitric oxide and thus allow oxygen into the mitochondria and allow that inner, uh, efficient energy production, the only two things that can do that are methylene blue and red light therapy. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. So again, at least use one or the other, but combining them together, you get that nice synergistic benefit. Um but again, as far as restoring metabolic health or as far as restoring mitochondrial function, like those are the two biggest ones I can think of. That is such a good point you make. Folks don't realize that they, you know, I don't talk enough about it on my platform, but really at the crux of everything is your mitochondrial health. So we can talk about, you know, eating more protein and strength training and doing all these things, which will help your mitochondria for sure. And adding muscle to your body will add mitochondria to your frame. But if you have very sick mitochondria, and that can be from a variety of reasons, you could be overly poisoned, which is not uncommon in today's society, you know, glyphosate, all the things you could um, have had poisoning through pharmaceuticals that you've taken in the past. You know, we know the things like Cipro, which was handed out like candy in the nineties, big mitochondria poisoner. That's what being floxed is. Those are the fluoroquinolone drugs. So there's all kinds of ways that people end up with really poorly functioning mitochondria. I think you could probably be born into it. I was not in great mitochondrial shape when I gave birth and my daughter has a lot of symptoms of low mitochondrial function. So we want to build mitochondria and add it to our frame, but via muscle, but we also want to help what we have work better. And when you do that, metabolic health improves. And without that metabolic health really just putters along. So the folks who are emailing me or DMing me saying, I'm doing, I'm trying everything. It's just not working. Maybe start with mitochondrial health at its core. And that includes going out and seeing, you know, getting red light from the horizon when you can. And I can't always in Oregon. So that's funny. This morning I was sitting with this adjacent to my eyes, you know, at eye level while I kind of went about my morning. Cause I'm like, I need my red light. Cause it's all cloudy outside. I can't, I still do go out there in the morning, even with the clouds, but that's a big one, you know, get, that's why we talk about getting horizon light and that evening or afternoon, early evening, uh, sun as it goes down, because we want that red light. That's the point of it. It's a circadian rhythm setter, if you will. Well, and to your point, all about the poisoning, that's actually one of the top things methylene blue is known for is it's being an antidote for chemical, let's see, chemical poisonings and overdose. So oh, whether, wow. so you're talking about all these different drugs or all these different like environment pollutants and poisons that we unfortunately accumulate during our lifetime, methylene blue seems to be a potent, you know, antidote, antidote for all of that. Yeah, I just pulled this up. National Institutes of Health. Methylene blue can act as an antidote to pesticide poisoning. That's crazy. So yeah, well, when you're talking about good um... news for me. I live out in wine country where I literally get <laughs> sprayed. I literally get sprayed. This field or the field behind me gets sprayed. I don't eat between the two, I'm probably getting hit like four to six times a year with Wow. Broadleaf killer or glyphosate. It makes me crazy if I think of, I just this morning actually took a urine test to test my glyphosate levels because I'm so concerned. So this is good to know. Anyway, 
Go ahead. I was. I didn't mean. Well, to no, that, that, that's a great like anecdote within this little diatribe we're having. It's like with everything that's being sprayed, or again, stuff you're breathing in or consuming in your foods that you don't even know that you're consuming. It's like to have these types of strategies, whether it's methylene blue or sweating it out through the infrared sauna, what have you, just to have these myriad of strategies to detoxify or mitigate the negative side effects. It's like, you only have one body. You only have one lifetime. You got to make the best of it. Yeah. Yeah. And the side effects of chronic glyphosate poisoning are so bad. I did a video the other day on my Instagram, I took it down because people were so dumb that they couldn't actually process what I was trying to show them. They couldn't get to the end of the, I stitched a video together. The first video was a lady using tampons to soak up the grease in her, while she was cooking ground beef. I saw like, that. I would ever do, I would never do such a thing, but people freaked. I, I, I don't know what to do, Mike. <laughs> people literally freak out on me about everything I post. I thought it was funny. And of course, anyone who knows me would know that would I would not do such a thing. Right, it was right. commercial, like regular tampons. Anyway, at the end of it, I said, don't, you know, be careful what you put up your hoo-ha because these things are soaked in essentially, I mean, they're, they're made out of cotton that's drenched yep. in glyphosate. <laughs> 